1964 Plymouth Belvedere by Lindbergh. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model kit builders. As promised, here's our second look at a Lindbergh kit. This is a cool one because it actually has two separate engine options, a V8 and a straight six. And of course, I'm talking about the 1964 Plymouth Belvedere. Mr. Belvedere, remember that TV show? Anyway, <laughs> well, this is his car because he is also a Belvedere. <laughs> no, I don't know. Anyway, whatever, right? But uh, before we begin by taking a look at what's in here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make another Monster Hobbies model car video, you are the first one to know about it. And now without further ado, let's go down where the rubber hits the road and rip the top off this box and see what's in the box. Now last week we were looking at the Lindbergh Dodge 330 and today, whoops, let's come up a little bit. We're going to be looking at the 1964 Plymouth Belvedere, again by Lindbergh, and hosted by Model King. Model King makes a whole line of products using different manufacturers' molds. They'll do a run of the kits that are not in production currently, or something they feel meets their requirements. So as we turn this over here, you got photos by Doug White, models built by Steve Goldman. So they show the Slant 6 and the Commando V8. Really cool. I like the little air cleaner here with all the indentations and stuff. <laughs> very basic, but very cool. So on the one side of the box, they show the blue and white topped model. And then that one has the Slant 6 in it. And then the copper gold colored one has the Commando V8. And this is what it looks like from the rear three quarters. And there you go with that again. So once again, this has that flip up box, which you guys know that I do not like this. Although, like I said, from a manufacturing point of view, it makes sense because you just need one big piece of cardboard instead of two separate ones. All right, so I'm gonna just close this and move the parts out of the way as we look at this instruction sheet. I'll just zoom back. Zoom back. Zoom back my Bonnie to me. I went there. Okay, so the instruction sheet again, like typical Lindbergh, doesn't have much in the front here. Very basic. Now let's take a look at this here. Okay, so again, a lot of detail into the engines. We have the V8 should be the Commando V8. Probably a police option back in the day. Um, there you go. I mean, look at all the detail here. Again, Lindbergh was com competing with Tamiya of Japan, so they really upped their game. Now over here we get into the Slant 6, which much like in that Dodge 330, I think it is the exact same illustrations and engine. Ooh, come into focus, please. All right. So there you go with that. And then the suspension is much the same. It's got a K member with the torsion bars and the front steering spindles. Here we go into the V8 with the separate exhaust pipes and the slant six with the single muffler and tailpipe, four piece rear differential. And then you add in your shock absorbers in the drive shaft and drop it in underneath. Then we get our radiator wall and the horns and radiator hose. Oh, look, it shows V8 hoses are there and there and the Sun 6 is dead top and off to this bottom side there. So fill in the holes for the engine you're not building. Then of course we get our inner fenders and all that put together. The separate interior sidewalls. Please check decal instructions for dashboard decal placement. There it goes into the interior and all that mounts onto the chassis. And of course there's our wheels and hubcaps and retainers going in there. And then as you turn it over, you get the glass going in. 
four pieces of glass for the rear windows and the no drafts. They even have sun visors molded on the glass. Then you get that cool looking front grill. Almost looks like a 64 Chev grill, doesn't it? Maybe they were inspired, Dodge was inspired by that. And then uh, you get your rear panel and your tail lights and everything going on. The option of the opening hood with the springs or just a closed hood, which most of us I think build the closed hood because it keeps dust out of that engine. Then you get your windshield wipers going on there and your final paint and decal call out at the bottom. Uh, there is a medium gray on this car for the really bland look. <laughs> so there they show your engine going on there and the whole deal. So without further ado, let's get gummed up trying to fold up instruction sheets. And let's fold this thing back up and look at the plastic parts. So our review of the Plymouth Belvedere begins with the body and there are some nice details on here even though the molding is a little bit soft to some of the AMT standards and that sort of thing. We have a little divot here which means we've got some chrome door handles coming up. It's got the nice convertible style roof much like the 63 Chevy. The um, hardtop convertible so this is steel but it has that rib there which makes it look like a convertible roof. And then if we move up closely, you can see along here, there's a little bit of a script. It would say Belvedere. Uh, just under the trunk lid in there, it says, oops, it says Plymouth. Very hard to see with the white plastic, of course. But overall, a very nice looking body. We also have the brace here to mount the radiator underneath with of course the hood release mechanisms and that included it's a little bit of the inner fender aprons there and of course we've got some vents up here and the holes for our windshield wipers to go through so again a very nicely detailed simplistic body now the plymouth here shares many features with last week's review which was the dodge 330 in fact, the undercarriage here looks very much like the same kit. Definitely, for sure. So you've got some nice detail on the gas tank. you got these little ribs in here. All the holes for the suspension components. And of course, our front end. This is the Chrysler subframe, which they used to use back in the day. Uh, you got the, the front here, and it's separate in there, and then the backs come in again. And it's got the rocker panel frame perimeter. Now here are the interior components for this model. We have the the uh, package shelf here and the floor pan, that sort of thing. This little ring here is to mount the front seat in. There is a little bit of a floor mat there, the gas pedal, and our column, or our uh, transmission tunnel, sorry. And it's got the gear shifts just sticking out there on the floorboards. We again have separately molded side panels with the handle cranks. This one doesn't seem to have the armrest molded in. Actually, this is interesting. This is all smooth right here. And there's the, the cranks there. But if you flip this over, then you got the detail. So this must be a reversible door panel. See, there's the detail. And then here it's all blanked off. So, oh, I think what this is is there must have been a race car version of this, so you could flip these around for your race car. And then look at the detail on the seat back here. So, oh yeah, and there's divots there for your roll cage. So this, this is shared with a, yeah, and then these four holes would be your roll cage mounts going back with the two pieces there. So, and that, yeah, okay, makes sense. Huh. All right, so this tub that we got here, this interior panel, can be used for the dragster version of this kit, which is another different Lindbergh mold, or maybe the same kit with different decals and back wheels, as we'll see. And then this, of course, would be the stock version, and our bench seats and everything would cover all this stuff up for the stock version. 
Now, I did make a mistake with the dashboard in the last video for the Dodge 330. This blank area, it's not a decal that goes in there. It's that chrome piece. So I'll show you that when we get there. Anyway, still a very nice detailed kit. So the next parts tree here includes the front bucket seats. Some nice detail on those. And our rear bench seat with the similar tuck and roll on there. And then we have our armrests up here and the two horns for the radiator wall. And then this has got a big blank space, which is reminiscent of the Johan Chrysler Turbine kit from 63 that I have featured in this uh, YouTube channel somewhere. But yeah, I mean, look at the nice detail on those seats. Now our next parts tree here contains the wheel retainer clips and the wheel backs, as well as the rim backs here for the tires plug in. And now here is the parts tree that has our great Chrysler V8 in it. And of course this is a manual transmission on this one. We've got our oil pan there and we have the cylinder heads and the valve covers. There's our fan with this. This has really not very much flash on it, if any at all. Unlike the 440 kit that I have, and there's our fan belt, our Oh, sorry, our fan and our fan belt. I did that in the last video too. Our uh, timing chain and water pump, and then the distributor and the brake master cylinder, oil filter, and hoses, and the starter motor up here. So on this sprue, we have a little license plate here with a monikered piece in there. We have the rear back of the car, which includes the license plate shroud. This is our front suspension components, the rear differential, shock absorbers, a crossbar, radiator, this is for your exhaust pipes, and at the back ends of the torsion bars, <laughs> which are these. There's the spindles, so you could actually make this have posable front wheels. The rear springs and our steering wheel with the horn ring molded in. And here is our final parts tree for the white plastic. We have the springs to hold up the hood, the inner fender aprons, the radiator wall, the firewall, our hood, and here's our brake, our uh, pedals. So you have your uh, brake, your clutch, and your parking brake, and then the battery. Now if we turn this over, we can look at the rib detail on the hood and notice there's also a little bit of a mat underneath there. So very nicely done. Not very much flash. A couple little mold marks in here to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade, but not bad overall. So what's interesting about this is there's two parts trees that are molded in black. And on this one we have the slant 6 motor as well as the intake manifold for the Commando V8. There's the fan for the straight, uh, Slant 6, and we've got the cylinder, or the valve cover right there, the intake and the exhaust manifolds, the water pump and timing chain cover, the belts and pulleys, the little teeny air cleaner for the Slant 6, and of course all the rest of the engine components. The next piece that we have molded in black are the exhaust pipes and a standard transmission up here for possibly the slant six. Uh, there are there is a, a trademark registry right on this exhaust or uh, this muffler here so you probably want to file that off and sand it down with some sandpaper. And now for my favorite parts tree the chrome pieces and as you can see, we've got a grill down here, which we'll have to get a bit of a black wash in there to make the detail pop out. We have the chrome-plated Commando V8 air cleaner right there, which is always nice. I love all the dimples and stuff around it. And then up here, where it looks kind of funny, this piece will actually glue to the bottom of the hood so that when you close the hood, the chrome top matches in there. 
And of course we got our front bumper with the parking lamps and our rear bumper. And then up here we've got some very nicely detailed stock hubcaps. And then this is that instrument cluster right here that goes into the dashboard. And just take a quick look at that. So you can see all the circular gauges and whatnot. So, oops, it's upside down. <laughs> so there's your speedometer right there. And then of course the oil pressure gauges and everything else that were in there. And then we've got these nice chrome pieces there, the uh, carburetor, the gear shift lever, the Chrysler, um, uh, alternator, <laughs> sorry. And then the door latches there. So again, some very nice detail on here. And the front grille is very reminiscent of the Johan front bumper uh, for the 64 Plymouth that I had. I had a Richard Petty one from Johan. And now we have our glass and our tail lights. Okay, these pieces here that I just kind of blew by there, those are actually the chrome backing plates for these two tail lights. So that's what that part is. Now, much like the Dodge 330 kit, you've got the clear glass and the molded in sun visors, but the windows are of course different. There's the rear side glass. And these also have the little no drafts with the window wrapping around. And then we've got our nice headlights here with the mesh detail inside. This kit also includes the Goodyear Super Custom Eagles that are in the Dodge 330 kit. So again, a very nicely detailed tire with the proper zigzag pattern. And I will have to pick that tire up off the ground now. And our final component here is the decal sheet. And they do have the gauges here that you can put into that instrument cluster. The nice Commando 426 air cleaner insert. Now notice that it's got the little pie shape cut out of it. So when you lay this deck all out, make sure you cut in this area really nicely with a sharp hobby knife. It should touch there to there, which will give it that dome shape that it needs. Then we have some nice 426 decals that would go on your valve covers, as well as a bunch of underhood bits here and there. And then you actually have script on there, as well as these very vintage 64 Plymouth California license plates. And that completes our review of the Lindbergh Model King 1964 Plymouth Belvedere. Well, wasn't that another great review down here? And uh, given the choice, which engine would you build? The straight six or the V8? Well, definitely I need to get a second one of these somehow. Huh, not sure quite how. Um, but anyway, that's my issue. So again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to know about it. And let's get this video up to 100 likes so it surfaces up really high in that Google search engine. And until next time, happy model building.